Welcome to part two of a two part recording in which I am creating a multi container Symphony 5 project using Docker. If you missed part one, there's a link down in the description down below, and that is where you will also find a link to the code on GitHub. Part one was very structural, it was all about establishing a network of containers and then spinning those up and checking that everything worked. In part two, we're going to go a bit more showbiz. We're going to pull in Symfony as well as a couple of other packages. We're also going to pull in some JavaScript modules and we'll compile some assets and we're going to turn the whole lot into a real life or the start of a real life Symfony 5 project. If you would like to see more content like this, then go ahead and give the video a like and be sure to subscribe. Also, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, then leave those in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you and I do read them all. So this is where I left off. I've spun up a network of containers as defined in this Docker Compose file. And in the browser, I've printed out Hello World from an index.php file, which can be found in this public folder that I'm deleting now. And the reason I'm deleting that is because we're now going to install Symfony. And the way I do that is with a command called docker exec. So I'll show you what that means. If we do dash dash help, it says run a command in a running container. And we're going to use a couple of options, I and T, which will allow us to run the command in an open bash. So the full command is docker exec dash I T. We can glue them both together. And then we're going to need our container name because docker exec commands are run at container level. They are run on your containers. So there's a container name and then we just need an open bash. And there you go. As you can see, it's dropped us straight in the location that we established as our working directory in our Docker file. And this is where we're going to run our command. So we're saying composer create hyphen project symphony um, forward slash skeleton because we're going to start with a bare bones uh, application. Always start small and scale on demand. And there's our application installing. Let's fast forward a bit. So that's the Composer way of installing a Symfony project. You can also do it using the uh, Symfony installer, which is this command here, Symfony new, and the dot means install at this location. Entirely up to you which of those you want to use. Let's now go back to the app folder where I can now see all of my Symfony project files. And if I refresh the browser, voila, Symfony 5 is alive. And just before I leave the browser, I'm going to show you one other cool thing, which is this tool here, gitignore.io. What this does is it generates gitignore files for your project. So I'm putting in Symfony and I'm putting in PHP Storm, which is the code editor that I'm using. I also saw there something called PHP Storm plus all. Not sure what that does, but I'll take it. And you hit create and boom, what that has done is generated a gitignore file for my dependency. So I'm going to copy that move back to my project and you can see the git ignore file in the symphony files i'm just going to paste in all that at the bottom superb so at the beginning of the first recording i said that i'd be using git on my house machine this is an entirely optional step but i don't think uh, i'd feel it was an honest recording unless i showed you exactly the steps i'd take to start a new project so i'm in the root of the project i'm not in the container now i'm in the root of my project uh, so I cd into the app directory, which is where I have my Symfony project files, and that's why I run git init, and I've initialized a uh, git repository there. So back in the container, I never actually closed this by the way, I just shifted to a different tab to uh, run git. I'm going to run this command here, symphony check colon req, and this checks that you have all the PHP extensions required to run a Symfony project. So if you're wondering how I knew which ones to use, now you know. I'm going to follow that step by installing Doctrine. And I do that with this command here, Composer Require Doctrine. So Doctrine is a PHP package which we're going to use for storing data and mapping objects. And if you're wondering why that didn't look like a typical Composer command, it's because I'm using something called Symfony Flex. The address is at the top of the screen. And if we just type in Doctrine in the search box here, and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that I actually used an alias. So if we bump this up, when I put when I use the alias doctrine in that composer command, what it gives us is this symphony rm pack. 
So let's go back to our composer JSON file and you'll see two things in here. One of those is a Symphony RM pack, which is what we installed when we used that Doctrine alias. And what enabled us to use that alias is this Symphony Flex. So now you know. Now let's go over to our EMV file. And you'll see this key here, database underscore URL, which is used by Symphony um, for the database connection. So we're just going to change some of these values here to the ones in our Docker compose file. So I'm saying root colon secret, that's our user colon password. And then here we have the host name for MySQL, and we need to change this to the host name of our MySQL container. So let's look at our Docker compose file. And we said that our container host names were these container service names. So we'll change that, MySQL 8 hyphen service. The port number stays the same. Database name, you can call it whatever you want, but I tend to use the same as the uh, project folder name. And server version is the version of MySQL. I'm using version 8. And that is that step done. So I'm now going to exit the container. And I'm going to show you an alternative to the docker exec command, which is run at container level. This is docker compose run, which you run at service level. So it affects the same thing and you can run very similar commands. So as you can see there, run a one-off command on a service. And we're going to use an option and that is this RM here and like running uh, with the D option when we did docker exec this to me and you this just means that it's going to hand the terminal back to us when we're finished so like I was saying docker exec is run at container level docker compose run is run at the service level so instead of grabbing the container name we're actually going to grab the service name for our PHP container which is the host name for our PHP container so it's PHP 74 hyphen service and we shall paste this in and what we're going to do is we're going to create the database which we just defined in our .env file so it's pin uh, php bin forward slash console doctrine colon database colon create and we'll let that create and there you have it s5 docker setup so just to help this sink in, I'm now going to run a command on the MySQL 8 container. So if you remember for containers, we use docker exec. And we're going to grab the container name. So it's exec for containers and docker compose for services. Execute containers, compose services. And we're just going to open a bash again here. We have an error. Docker exec, yeah, obviously. So of course... Um, there's a gap between docker and exec, whereas there's a hyphen between docker compose. I'm going to sign into MySQL, so MySQL-u, and our username is root-p for password, and our password was secret. So here we are in MySQL, and we're just going to say show databases. And there you have it, second from bottom, S5 docker setup. Excellent, that's been created. So we'll quit MySQL, and we'll exit our container and then I'll show you something else and this is dbeaver which is a database administration tool I used to use SQL Pro but that uh, packed in on me when I tried to use it with MySQL 8 so I started using this it's open source and connecting to these things is all the same whether you use MySQL work, Bren, SQL Pro, whatever uh, it's all the same inputs so I'm changing the port to 4306 if you remember our docker compose file and username is root, password secret Let's test the connection. Excellent, we're connected. So what we're going to do now is just check that the database is there. Like I say, I, uh, I normally I use a terminal, but uh, if you're looking for a tool and you want to try something else, maybe give this a go. Let me know how you get on. Leave a message in the comments down below. And there's our database, S5 Docker Setup. And I'll just show you a couple of other tips if you're using PHP Storm. So the first one is a tool called Symphony Support, which gives you loads of auto-completion and enabling. So if you just come to the Plugins Marketplace and search Symphony Support, you'll find this. Uh, it's got a lot of installs, as you can see, I've already got it. And it recommends a couple of other things, which is PHP Annotations. I definitely recommend that. That'll 
uh, help you with auto completion on routing and config php toolbox not so sure about that one but just install it anyway and then if we come to php uh, languages php symphony and just enable this little checkbox here it says enable plugin for this project i've just seen something else web directory for symphony 5 is actually public it used to be web on the older version of symphony apply those changes and i'll show you another thing here so in php composer ensure that your path to composer json is completed if it's not already done and then enable this checkbox here synchronize ide settings with composer json and i'll show you the reason for that now so i'm going to create a controller in source controller and i'm just going to call this foo controller and you'll see it's given it a namespace of app controller so if we go to composer json I'll show you how and why that's happened. And if you look at our auto loading, there's a mapping between the app namespace and the source folder here. So I hope you get some practical usage out of those couple of tips. We're now going to slide back into our PHP container and we're going to pull in one last package. And so docker exec PHP container bash, and then it's simply composer require encore. And as you'll guess, that is a alias uh, because we're using Symfony Flex. So we'll just let that install. And what we're installing here is a Symfony bundle called Webpack Encore Bundle. So we'll just go and check that that's installed. Yes, our composer JSON file has been updated. Webpack Encore Bundle. And if we look at our files, it's given us a couple of new ones here. Package JSON. And that already has three or four dev dependencies predefined and it's also given us a webpack config.js file and so webpack encore is what we're actually going to use to compile our css and javascript but before we do that we need to grab those dependencies that we saw in the package json file so we're going to uh, use node for the first time the final piece of the puzzle so docker compose run rm node service and then it's yarn install so if you pulled in the latest version of node you will get yarn with that and we'll speed through this and then what we'll do is we shall go back to our project and we'll have a look and see how all of this works so the webpack config file it reads fairly easily when we installed Encore, you'll see that we gained this assets folder with a couple of starter files. Here's a CSS one. And if we look in our public folder, it just contains an index.php file. That will change now when we compile our assets, which we do by changing the yarn install command to yarn dev. And we shall let that run. And then we shall go back to the project and see what's changed. And so if we look in our public folder now, we now have this build folder and there are our front end files app css app js and it's another js for, uh, file and so compiling assets is as simple as that and the good thing about this is it works with vue.js and react out of the box so if like me you found that javascript's becoming increasingly complex over the last few years then having a simple tool like this which just works is definitely the way to do it and with that we are done We've come a long way. We started with just an empty Docker Compose file, and now we have a Symfony 5 project up and running on a slick network of containers. And you can use this as a base to build literally anything you wish. So I hope you manage to use it to create something useful and cool. If you do, make sure you come back and tell me all about it. If you would like to see more content like this, then go ahead and give the video a like. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe because there's going to be tons more valuable recordings coming up. What did you like? What would you have done differently? If you have any questions, comments or feedback, then leave those in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you and I do read them all. I'll see you soon.